What's going on everyone? This is Kunal. Welcome to part 2 of my cybersecurity series. So in this video, I'm going to discuss cybersecurity projects on the blockchain. So first let's talk about is this article by the International Business Times that discusses unintended consequences, how decentralization can help cybersecurity reinvent itself. And it includes an article by Steve Bossy, who is from the Polyswarm uh project which is one of the projects that I'm going to be talking about in this video and he explains how the network can quickly build micro engines to tackle emerging threats and be rewarded in cryptocurrency so this article just to go quickly through this when I was 12 years old I hacked into a local company's computer system and what they what he describes is they found out and instead of getting angry they asked if I'd come work for them and he kind of gives you an insight into the cybersecurity uh, field and a lot of the individuals who work in cybersecurity were actually hackers who were caught and they kind of been converted to like white hat hackers now meaning they conduct ethical hacking or hacking to for to help businesses find vulnerabilities so <clears throat> as a society when we build anything from software to spaceships we're telling machines how to behave computers do what they're told to do not what we intend them to do we are engineering complexity so fast that code is created rapidly and then blah, blah, blah. what are the unintended consequences so our job as security professionals is to point out these vulnerabilities and identify the hackers who are trying to exploit them so most anti-malware and antivirus companies are structured in a way that rewards chasing threats against widely used software they're financially incentivized to go after large threats to maintain a large client base and while widespread vulnerabilities are indeed a concern each of us in, as individuals are much more likely to be hit by smaller everyday threats um, so what the argument that they're making is and, and when they're making the argument for decentralization of cybersecurity services they're explaining that each individual may need a cybersecurity service that's tailored to their own individual needs. Like they explain email phishing, attachments loaded with malicious links, and increasingly sophisticated attacks. And they describe how some of this stuff may not be widespread. Like it may not be some sort of worm that's attacking, you know, every large corporation in the country. Uh, but it could be something that the average everyday user sitting at home in front of their computer may need this kind of a service to protect them and their own individual threats. And they're explaining how decentralization can help each individual user to get cybersecurity services tailored to their needs. And so the first project to discuss this is Polyswarm. So Polyswarm right now is sitting at about six tenth of a cent uh, a pop and under ten million dollar market cap uh... fairly low volume and a circulating supply of about one point five billion with a total supply of about one point nine billion and uh... if you want to catch it you can catch it on hitbtc or idex or ddex and so what is polyswarm so they describe themselves as the first decentralized antivirus marketplace and so based on my understanding of Polyswarm since I've gone through it, it's providing a decentralized platform for cybersecurity professionals and, you know, cybersecurity entities to provide their services and compete with, for, you know, compete for, you know, clients. And the client in this decentralized world is not going to be a company, but you, the user, every single individual. So they describe the problem as, um, you know, 70% of threats go undetected, lim so limited coverage, um, you know, shortage in cost of IT experts, right? So IT experts cost, a, you know, a lot of money, uh, growing problems. So cybercrime is increasing, and they say the statistics say between 2015 to 2021, the cybercrime is supposed to double in cost from three to six trillion dollars. Then there's duplicative coverage with competitors one size fits all products so many people see they have like two antivirus programs in many cases on their computer and stuff like that right we all know about mcafee antivirus right so i'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that at the end i'm gonna save that for the end so slow to react time to resolve attacks has written 33 percent so they explain all of this really quickly for us so think Bitcoin, but instead of mining a global community of anti-malware experts compete to best detect today's threats. So Polyswarm incentivizes rapid innovation in the $8.5 billion a year cyber threat intelligence space with precise economic incentives that reward a global community of security experts for timely and accurate malware 
identification. Pretty simple use case, guys. So let's go through this real quickly. So they have a security expert section where they explain Polysorm is the first decentralized marketplace where security experts earn income by operating cutting edge micro engines that compete to protect users and enterprises. So problems solved by Polysorm. Unbalanced market. Um, Right, so there's an S, there will be a shortage of 3.5 million IT security jobs by 2021. Most of the security jobs are in Western countries while there is a lack of opportunities in other locations. So again, they talk about access to opportunities with geographical barriers. Again, any company that you see that is looking to address geographical barriers is, is, should be an enticing company because there is really, if you look at the financial market, there's a huge, you know, banking the unbanked. A sector that can really uh, be tapped into so when you talk about geographical barriers there is a, a large swath of the world population that can be tapped into uh, then niche software is hard to scale so conversely how we talked about how you know many cybersecurity services are are tailored to deal with you know widespread threats like a worm attacking a whole bunch of um, large corporations conversely uh, a software that's dedicated to handle, you know, a, a one small computer, it's hard to scale. So Polysorm is looking to be not just an, an antivirus for you, but an antivirus that can be scaled for everyone's individual tailored needs. And then finally, revenue stream. So the security experts are going to be the essentially the 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 uh, companies, the um, vendors in this kind of scenario setup, and they can get um, paid for. Uh, building specialized anti-malware software right so they can they have and polysorm here's an interesting part polysorm has its own platform development kit paragold so for coders who want to code their own you know uh, software on the polysorm platform they can use paragord to build their own uh, threat detection and cybersecurity uh, products um so uh, how it works it just explains a little bit into the token fueled by nectar tokens right so if you go on coin market cap you see that polyswarm is under nct uh token so that's the token the polyswarm market runs on nectar a token that will make it easier to submit and classify potential threats on the polyswarm market nectar replaces traditional lump antivirus and threat scanning subscription payments that are inefficiently distributed to a single vendor so it just explains and you can see this kind of map here uh uh, that kind of goes through the entire process. You guys can check it out for more detail on your own. It just explains the different sections and how, you know, the bounty would work, how the entire process will work from the end user to the security expert. So security expert puts up a, 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 um, a bounty for a specific, or the end user puts up an offer, and then you have a bounty over here. And you have arbiters, they're looking, uh, you can go into more detail on the white paper to see exactly what the arbiters do. But this is just an idea of what uh, the system would look like. And then to go to the security section. So we've informed security people so we know bugs happen. More importantly, we know that we're not above making them. During alpha and beta development, we'll offer a bug bounty program to the world. Details are being decided now. Stay tuned. And professional audit. Bug bounties are great, but there's no substitute for professional audit, right? So the, we even listed the help of Trail of Bits, a high-end information security company. So they will help them do those security audits that are like some of the high professional. All right, so this is just an overview of Polyswarm. Uh, let's see if you guys like this particular project. Um, I personally really like it. Let's move on to the next project, and that is called Hacken. So Hacken is sitting here at $2, basically, and a $10 million market cap, a little bit higher volume, 281000 and circulating supply of under $5 million, and a total supply of $5.6 million. And if you want to pick it up, you can pick it up on KuCoin and Yobit. So what is Hacken? So I really liked Hacken. I, I call it a decentralized cybersecurity firm because it offers all the services that a cybersecurity firm would but it's decentralized so, and they call it the white hat community token so global tokenized business with operating cybersecurity products and if you go through the details as me yeah the cookies thing 
what is it and how does it work there's a video that you guys can watch and just about how it can so design for security excellence hacken offers a cybersecurity utility token named hkn for a full stack of countermeasures aimed at reducing threats vulnerabilities and attacks by eliminating or preventing them hacken is the only payment method inside the hacken ecosystem so they also have this thing called hack and proof which is a decentralized bug bounty program so bug bounty program means anytime any individual finds a bug or some sort of security bug or in the code they can uh, submit the bug to the hack and platform and receive the bounty in exchange for uh, submitting that bug uh, so again it it, uh, it um encourages ethical hacking it encourages you know white hat um, hacking and it encourages people you know turning in and uh, revealing and uh, you know showing any vulnerability that they find as opposed to ex trying to exploit it because you can what it what it does is it you know the reason a black hat hacker would exploit something is they would want to gain some sort of monet an example would be getting a monetary advantage but if you have a monetary advantage for doing ethical hacking then it kind of takes that part away and turns the incentive on its head. So cybersecurity services. So Hacken provides a wide range of cybersecurity services custom tailored to the individual needs of the customer. We deploy leading experts from around the globe to provide personalized cybersecurity solutions for any size business, including anti-phishing, pen testing, penetration testing, and smart contract audits. So they have this burning principle, right? So Hacken charges 30% for each service purchased on the platform. 15% of that service charge is burned. And then once the amount of hack-in reserve reach, 15%, 1% of the total amount of hack-in in circulation, then hack-in makes 24-hour announcement and hack-in puts this amount back into circulation across hack-in listed exchanges. So it just kind of explains, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, some of the things that are going on. Uh, of course, with the EU G GDPR, you know, data compliance thing, uh, this is really a really big thing with cybersecurity and privacy uh, when it comes to those things. I, mean, I know many of you guys have seen countless emails or something about GDPR. Uh, this is related to the new EU regulation that just went into place uh, on May 25th regarding data privacy and things of that nature. Uh, kind of a response to some of this uh, Facebook stuff that went on. Um, so yeah, that's just hacking for you guys. Um, it's on contrast to Polyswarm, Hacken is, is looking to be more of a right decentralized cybersecurity firm and offering many services versus Polyswarm is just like a platform where any um, any uh, individual can come in and uh, any individual can come in and really uh, say, OK, I'm going to put up a, a bug. I'm, I have they have its own. It has its, its own, you know, coding. Uh, development kit where you guys can come in or any any uh, cybersecurity in, individual can come in and code uh, what they need to code um, so that's that in a nutshell here's a video of John McAfee uh, really getting frustrated over trying to uninstall antivirus and it, that whole system and the way it's designed where you know certain companies have paid to essentially product place you know product placement place their product onto somebody else's software like windows and th that kind of whole system shows a need for a decentralized antivirus software so it's a really humorous video and if you have a chance please do uh check it out um so just to conclude here um please do like and subscribe this video and subscribe to our channel um, on Allcoin Buzz on YouTube. You can also follow us on Allcoin Buzz at Twitter, where we're over 76,000 followers now. Uh, we also have Allcoin Buzz ladies here, where you guys can follow. Uh, right here, they have over 3,000 followers now on Allcoin Buzz lady, a Buzz underscore ladies. Uh, we also have Allcoin Buzz website, where we have podcasts. Again, I really like that all that um, blue podcast, Ethereum Blue. They're also addressing a, a cybersecurity need on the blockchain. Uh, we have news and updates uh, and about us. You can contact us as well. And finally, Altcoin Buzz Steemit, where we have over 1,800 followers. And we really put out a, co a copy of our videos as well. And you guys can upvote to earn Steam dollars, a form of cryptocurrency. So again, thank you very much for watching this video. This was part two. And part three will be coming up soon.